This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown has a new title now here on this program. <laughs> he he is my memory guide dog, bringing you out of the fog and recalling the days of yesterday. Well, for you know, it, it's it's amazing that Larry Bubbles Brown has this uh, incredible memory. In fact, I was watching, I was watching uh, uh, some old Letterman's on on YouTube. He had some guy on who supposedly had the best memory in the world or something like that. And he could, if you gave him a date, he could tell you what day it fell on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, like, for instance, I, I was born December 18th, 1939. And if I ask Larry what day of the week was that, he says... I would say that would be a Monday. See how fast you did it? This uh, this guy on Letterman had to go through the process that he got to figuring out it was Monday. Mm. And I'm going, he's not as good as Larry Bubbles Brown. Well, there is a process that you can do, and I, yeah, I just... Uh, but you came up with that. You didn't... There was barely a pause between when you said it. What day of the week it was, was it again? It was pretty easy. I, I'm looking at... Um, I was looking at 1967 because the calendar is the same every 28 years, so that would be the same. 39 would be the same as 67. Uh-huh. So I, I happen to remember December 15th was a Friday. I don't know why. So 16, 17, 18 would be a Monday. Wow! Wow! You just boom, 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 boom. This guy wasn't that fast. Wow! He went through the process verbally, but he wasn't as fast as you are. And I went. Uh, seen, you know who's faster is Mary Lou Henner. Well, I I interviewed Mary Lou Henner, and she has this ability to remember what everything. She remembers with great detail every day of her life. Yeah, um, like you could say December eighteenth, nineteen sixty-seven. She could tell you what she had for lunch. Wow, you can't do that, right? She no, she's one of I forget what it's called. It's a certain type of memory. She's one of six people in the world that have it. Wow. I'd love to know how that brain works, you know. Everybody yeah, and she's like, usually people like that are really screwed up socially, but she seems to be very normal. What's interesting is that she comes up with those things, and she is, like, amazing at it. I mean, I, I tested her a little bit in the studio, and I was amazed by, you know, the stuff she came up with. Um, but uh, she, uh, I'm just wondering... Uh, if if that you know people say oh she, and she's so she's so smart, but is it a matter of smart as to whether you have this ability or not? No, I think it's like they say intelligence. I think yeah, there's like seven types of it. So I think some people are are weighted heavily in certain areas, and I think I'm pretty dumb in most areas. So. Well, you're not dumb. You're, I mean, you have. What I find when I talk to you, Larry, is you have a lot of information in that brain of yours. <laughs> really? Um, and I have a lot in mine. I mean, I, I, I was always good at m- remembering minutiae, you know? But, I mean, I'll be talking with you, and you'll come up with something, and you'll say, oh, and that was because so-and-so did such-and-such to such-and-such. And I go, where'd he come up with that? You know, where, <laughs> where, what part of his brain... Here's a thing that I found. Years ago, I was interviewing a guy who wrote a book on the Old West. Okay? I'm sitting there interviewing him, and then we get into the subject of certain things like, uh, you know, bandits and things like that. And I'm coming up with names, and, and what about this bandit, blah, 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 blah. And finally, I'm halfway through the interview. I go, where did I get all this information? You know, I mean, it was information that I, apparently it was a a part of my 
desire to learn stuff or whatever that was subconscious that every time I heard a fact in that particular category, it just lodged itself in my brain. That is interesting. Yeah, you had an interest in crime, apparently. <laughs> an interest in crime? You like the bandits. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't, I didn't know why I all of a sudden knew about all these people in the, and, and a lot of other people that weren't bandits, too, in the Old West, you know? And the guy was going, boy, where'd you get all this information, Alex? And I went, I don't know. It's just somehow stuck in my brain. Maybe your father knew a lot about it. No, he didn't. I think it's just sometimes you, you subconsciously don't know. You don't know that you have an interest in a certain kind of thing, okay? But every time you pass a piece of information about that, you store it in your brain. Yeah, when I was a kid, I loved baseball, so I was a savant on statistics. and. Yeah. I can I can name every World Series result since 1920, 100 years. All right, I, let's start. 1920. 1920, uh, uh, Cleveland beat the Brooklyn Dodgers five no, games to three. No, uh, 1921. Uh, yeah, New York Yankees uh, lost to the New York Giants. Okay, <laughs> this is getting weird. Okay, let's try my birthday, uh, uh, December uh, 1939. That was the uh, Yankees swept the Cincinnati Reds four games in New Zero. Just just swept that game, huh? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about the next year, 1940? Cincinnati beat Detroit. Okay. Here, here sometimes people forget this. Okay. Uh, how about 2020? 2020 would be uh, Dodgers uh, beat Tampa. Oh. Okay, See, that's the, my hardest one to be the last ten years because I've totally lost interest in baseball. Yeah, well, I, that's why I brought that one up because we have a tendency to forget stuff that just happened last year. Like, oh, my short-term memory is like gone. People, yeah. people go, "Oh, wow!" You know, the Academy Awards are on tonight. Boy, I wonder who's going to win. I go, "Tell me who won last year," and most people can't tell you. Yeah. In fact, I don't remember what did win last year. Nobody watched. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, last last year at least nobody got punched. Yeah, nobody got punched. They they did it. Where in the railway station? They did it in uh, um, Union Station in New in uh, L A. Um, but uh, it, I it's very hard to remember, you know. Uh, and like last night, the Marjorie was watching this film, Argo. Oh, by the way, old joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Argo. Argo who? Argo, fuck yourself. Anyway. <laughs> Argo is a good... The, I haven't seen many movies in the past 20 years. I like Argo. Yeah, it's a good good little movie. Directed by... Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, Batman. The kid. Uh, uh, yeah, the kid that... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these, we, when you start losing, um, you can't remember names, I think is the first sign of a senility. Really? Yeah. Then I'm going very senile. Well, I'm, I am too. You know, I mean. He's, a, he's a Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck, right. Anyway, um, he directed the movie, and Marjorie went, oh, I haven't never seen it. I said, you haven't? She said, no. I said, this thing won the Academy Award for Best Picture. She says, it did? You know, you go back to some of these and people will go, it won? Really? Because you think that the great movies win. But if you go back, for instance, to what was the greatest film of the, uh, of the uh, 60s, I think. Uh, the best film of the 60s. And, or, or maybe, yeah. maybe it was, was it the 60s or the 70s? I'm trying to remember. But uh, one year... Um, Ordinary People won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Do you know the year on that one? By any chance? 19, 1980. Was it 1980? Yeah. Really? Mm hmm I thought it was oh, different than that. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I can look it up here. See, I have IMDB, and then I just put in, uh, I put in uh, Ordinary People. Robert Redford directed Ordinary People, nineteen eighty. You're absolutely correct. Okay, 
Uh, it won the Academy Award. What film didn't win the Academy Award? Uh, Stardust Memories? No. No. Here's the film that didn't, with it, lost out to ordinary people. And at the end of the 80s, when they, oh, took, um, the po- okay, I, uh, when they took a poll of re- reviewers and, and critics, they said, what's the best film of the 80s? And this film came out as the best film of the 80s, but it lost to ordinary people. I was going to guess Raging Bull. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. Now, that's a great film, but it lost out to ordinary people. Which nobody remembers. <laughs> When's the last time any of you out there ever saw ordinary people? Never. Who was in that? Uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Mary Tyler Moore. Donald Sutherland, I think. Yeah. Uh, You know, I've never seen it, actually. And I never cared about it. I don't think I have either. Yeah. But, I mean, so when they say best picture, it doesn't really matter. (laughs) You know, it really doesn't matter. They've been given to a lot of bad pictures and the history of the Academy. Uh, well, I mean, what it is is they're pictures that for the moment are popular and have have um, uh, a headwind, as it were. Um, but they're not particularly movies that will last. Um, so, I mean, it, 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 like, uh, what was the first picture ever to win an Academy Award for Best Picture? Uh, Wings, very 1927. Good. Yeah, very good, very good. Not a bad film. Um, I'm trying to think, though. I think there may have been a second film that won that year. Uh, there was something about... I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to talk to my friend, Shecky. He'll, he'll have the answer to it. But uh, the first Academy Awards weren't that m- way in which they go, oh, this is the best picture. They had some other category for best picture for something else. And I can't remember what it was now. But anyway... But you go back to these best of things, and people can't remember them. Hell, you know, in a week I can ask people who won for best album of the year at the Grammys, and they won't be able to tell me. You know, because you, <laughs> yeah, because you, it's forgettable, and and nobody will remember this year's because pretty much the uh, the Oscars stopped, the Oscar ceremony stopped when. Uh, Chris Rock got slapped, and everything after that, <laughs> nobody paid attention to. I mean, that's the great sin of Will Smith, is he hijacked the Oscars, you know. And uh, how much does that hurt his career? Well, I don't, you know, I think I think it will hurt it with the public. I think the public, uh, when you have a, you know, you all uh, the, the thing a star has to do besides be able to schmooze Hollywood and get the parts, is to make the public love them. And if the public loves them on some certain level, uh, that's all that you need. You've got a career going for you. The minute the public doesn't love you anymore and starts forgetting you, you have a hard time keeping a career going. So in the case of Will Smith, he was very well loved by the public. I mean, I didn't even have a bad perception of Will Smith. Did you? No, and this really it really it, makes it kind of ugly. But. This showed the man at his most vicious. Yeah. Okay? And people are going to remember that. And they're going to go to a movie with Will Smith. Or, or First of all, they're going to go, ah, it's a Will Smith movie. I don't want to see any movies by him. He's a mean guy. You know? that's mm-hmm. That's for starters. I mean... It won't affect his career immediately. They'll still hire him to make movies, but then when they don't sell at the box office, they're going to say he's through. Yeah. On the other hand, I think Chris Rock came out looking great. Oh yeah, I think his career is on the upsurge. He could, and he needed it now because he's he, you know in the last couple of years. I mean, he's been done okay and so on and so forth, but he hasn't been uh, an item. I mean, he's done. Have you seen him act lately? Some of the stuff he's done, like he did Fargo on TV. I saw Fargo, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was good. He was damn good. But uh, y- you know who came out okay on that? Uh, those Oscars too for me. I'm not a big Amy Schumer fan. I don't know about you. I didn't see her on that. I've I've never been a big Amy Schumer fan, but she won me over in that show. She did a really good job. You know. Okay. Oh. Well, whatever people, some people do come out to the. It benefits them. 
And I think the way in which Rock handled the situation probably gave him a good cachet with the public. You know? Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, he handled it like a nice guy. But anyway, Rock so, it back, I wonder what would have happened. <laughs> I mentioned on our last episode with you that, you know, that I, I, I want to use you as my memory guide dog. Uh, because people have guide dogs when they're blind and can't see, and I think we should have guide people when we can't remember things anymore, and they have a memory that just... Has has this ability of yours with your memory waned as you've gotten older? Because I start forgetting things as I get older. Oh, I'm forgetting things, yeah. But are you forgetting things in the area in which you are a savant, as it were? Am I- I'm still good on the dates. I'm still good on uh, some baseball. I mean, you remember stuff about my life that I absolutely don't remember. I remember stu- a lot of stuff about the early comedy days, and I remember doing uh, the first time I did your show. Okay. The, uh, when was that? It. I don't remember. It was a Friday in January of 1983. So it could be any Friday. So it would have been the let's see it would have been the uh, been the seventh uh, or the fourteenth probably I think it was the fourteenth the fourteenth first time you ever appeared with me where were we at the uh, on on Sutter on Sutter so that was the quake yeah yeah and I was on with Steve Pearl oh the, and who who brought you by who 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 pushed you on me you uh you. Pearl and Billy Jay had started talking about me on the air, and you got interested, so you told him to bring me down one day. Yeah. How were they talking about you, that you were weird? They mentioned a couple of my jokes, and you liked them. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. And eventually, you became my uh, my traffic guy. Yeah, that was uh, many years. That was uh, 95. Because what it was is that we had the traffic in most cities, when you heard traffic folks, came from a, a company. What was the company again? Uh, the uh, Metro Traffic. Metro Traffic. And so you would hire Metro Traffic, and then you would flip the switch and go to Metro Traffic, and you got the traffic, right? And we decided, I think, that we, we really wanted our own person inside that could make well, you had Lisa Carr for a while. We had Lisa Carr for a while. Then she she left, and then uh, oh, she did, she didn't leave. I think we put her in another position or something. But we, yeah, we needed then, somebody. Uh, I don't think she wanted to do traffic anymore. I came down one day and just uh, she wasn't there, and I said, "Let me do them," and uh, <laughs> got a got a good response. And then I think you said, "Let's try this out full time." Yeah. Yeah, and the, and the station went along with it, and and your weather for your traffic for uh, traffic reports, they you did get the right the report out. You did get the yeah. information people needed to know, but then you had your own way of doing the rest of it. Yeah, we had sound effects and characters, and it was just, <laughs> it was actually kind of fun. You know? Yeah, well, you know, and and uh, there were a couple of of catchphrases that you had. It was park it whore. Park it whore. If somebody was stalled, park it whore. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there was one other that I was thinking of the other day. Oh, well, no, I was thinking of one other catchphrase you had in your act. And, and if I say it to people, but this always got a laugh on the air because the audience knew where it came from. But if you didn't know where it came from, it wasn't funny. <laughs> I don't remember. It was, a, it was a singular word. Huh. You don't remember your act? No. Butter. But <laughs> I would say that during the track. Okay, I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah. But butter. Uh, uh, tell them where that came from. Uh, n- nobody out there listening to us. W- what's funny about the word butter? Okay, it was, a, it was a punchline to a David Feldman joke. And the joke was, it was somebody was doing. Somebody had been busted for doing cocaine. No, and, somebody uh, was fat. Somebody really fat. And yeah. What was it? What was the coke cut with? Butter. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> For some for some reason, I just kept writing Feldman about that joke. I did, and suddenly all the comics in town would just say "butter" out yeah. of nowhere. But <laughs> yeah. became like a it became like a mini mania in San Francisco. Butter. <laughs> but you did it in your own way. You kind of had to put an inflection on it. Butter. <laughs> <laughs> 
See, no, I still yeah. laugh. I mean, I know, I know it's so stupid. <laughs> There's nothing funnier than something really stupid. I always, I always felt that the best thing you could do with a bunch of comics is just sit around and have them just do nothing but punchlines. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. No, because everybody, you know, a lot of the jokes that you give do it with, people already know the joke. So the punchline says something in and of itself. And the one yeah. punchline I always remembered was, and the same goes for your cat, too. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. Now, nobody's going to laugh if I just go, and the same goes for your cat, too. But if I told you the whole joke and then all I said was that after that, you would laugh at it. Yeah. I think it was a story about a, a dog or something who comes in and beats up a bunch of people and blah, 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 blah. And then he looks at the guy and goes, and that goes for your cat, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, 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 butter was the was the cat one, butter, the one yeah. catchphrase. People, uh, uh, <laughs> every time I post something on Facebook, uh, Doctor Gonzo always comments butter. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's still out there, and he always he always has a picture of a big stick of butter. She puts on. <laughs> wait a minute, you post on Facebook. I do. Yeah. How do you do that? Uh, you get uh, on dial-up. You can do the uh, basic Facebook. It's very quick. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. So you're not exactly the Luddite I imagined you were. You're doing Facebook. I get email and things like that. Do you have a Facebook page? Oh, I'm yeah, sure. I've never looked at it because I really? assumed you didn't have one. I do. I rarely go on it, but... Uh... Uh, there. You know, oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, let me see here. Larry Bubbles Brown. Is it under Larry Brown or Larry Bubbles Brown? That's a fan page that I never go to, and that's, uh, there's the Larry Brown, too, but there's 10 billion Larry Browns. But, yeah, but which are you? Well, here it says Larry Brown, friend. Is this you? This is you. There's your car. Okay, see, we're friends. That, there's my 75 Trans Am, if you're looking at it. Now, did you put the Trans Am up there and everything? I had somebody do that for me. Oh, okay, okay. You have 2.8K uh, friends. That's a well, that's lot. A, that's a lot. That's not a lot, is it, on the uh, Internet? I, you, the maximum you can have on Facebook is 5,000. Yeah, I've got 5,000 on my personal one, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. For a Luddite, you're doing okay on Facebook. <laughs> you have three. Uh, you have uh, 2.8k friends. 386 of them are mutual friends of you and I. Okay. Uh, well, somebody's year it was '06. Somebody signed me up for MySpace, and mm -hmm. then a couple years later, somebody goes, "MySpace is passe," and they signed me up for Facebook. That's what I remember. Yeah, well, I, uh, um, uh, I, I'm I looking at it now, and you actually have posted. Oh, okay. Um, and and the one that I see here, that uh, trying to set up some dates at the Shrapnel Room in Kiev. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's see here. Uh, it's now cheaper to fill a hooker's tank. <laughs> Oh God! You don't post often, but when you do, it's funny. You know, I know comics that literally they're posting like every ten minutes. Yeah, no, you, you, that, that would be exhausting. Jesus! It takes you ten minutes to post one sentence. Yeah, yeah I, I go on. I post maybe once a week or something. Do you use your? Point, do you have a computer? Nope. You have a computer, don't you? I do. Yeah. So you Nobody use sees. you use the computer to do it with. Yeah, yeah of course. Okay, good. The, <laughs> you must be the only guy signing up with uh, dial-up. I mean, come on. Yeah, I think it's called mobile Facebook, M Basic or something like that. It's uh, oh, really? if, you, if you're on dial-up and you do the old uh, regular Facebook, it takes forever. Well, you certainly are amaze me all the time. Now I found out you have a Facebook page. I thought you knew we're friends on there. So. We are. I think so. I, I guess. Wait a minute. Let me look. Hold on a second. Let me go back uh, to the page. Wait a minute. Where is it? Uh, I just lost it. Wait a minute. Larry Bubbles Brown. Larry Bubbles Brown. I'm sure we're friends. Larry. 
Brown friend. There we go. Let me go there. Oh, we are friends. Okay. Yeah, we are friends. So I must have. I must have one time. See, I need you as my memory guide dog. Yeah. <laughs> help me out. Help me. Help me. Anyway, well, we would call that a memory guide for the uh, what? <laughs> for the thinking impaired. Memory impaired. <laughs> Anyway, hey, Larry, let's do it again next week, okay? We will, yes. This is the fabulous Larry Bubbles Brown. I love talking to him. One day when he gets uh, more than dial-up, we probably could see him. Anyway, yeah. talk to you later, Larry. Okay, Alex, you got it. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes. Okay. Larry. Good old Larry. Good old Larry. You know, I mean, he amazes me all the time. I mean, he's such a Luddite, and all of a sudden I find out he's got a Facebook page and that I actually became a friend of his a while back, so I should have known he had a Facebook page. Or maybe I was so stunned when I saw it. No, I don't know. But anyway, I'm trying to get myself adjusted here. Uh, boy, I've been having... A bad day today with my stomach. I mean, I've been on that. I've got the, you know, the big uh, trotteroonies, okay, uh, and and that bothers me. So if I'm if I'm doing this show, and in the middle of this show I need to go to the can, as my father used to call it. Please excuse me, but I think I can make it now. I think I I did my last, and I then I jugged a modian like it was going out of style and i'm hoping that i will be uh okay i don't and i don't know what's causing i have ibs but it hasn't been acting up a lot uh because i found that when i take probiotics which i do almost every day that it uh, it keeps it away but i think there's something i'm eating now and it's happened twice to me really badly in the last uh, two weeks and both times I had a steak for dinner, and I like to put this uh, Paul Prudhomme blackening stuff, you know, to make blackened steak. And I think maybe for some reason that's affecting me. So, anyway, just the old man griping about his health, folks. Yep, 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 yep. Anyway, uh, and I'm I'm incredibly tired today too. I I, I went out. And uh, we took, uh, took a walk up the street because we were having lunch with a friend of Marjorie's. And, uh, man, it was just, it's, it's everything I can do to, to walk straight and everything. I'm, like, really lightheaded. I think it's all this drug I'm taking. I, I, it's something. Are people tired of me talking about my health? Uh, I'll just stop. I'll just stop. I don't care, you know. One day I won't be here any longer. I'll be dead. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be able to have on my tombstone what I've always wanted to have on my tombstone. See, I told you I was sick. See. Anyway, where are we? Okay, we're going to go to the, uh, we're going to go to the uh, 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 Zoom panel, our uh, citizens panel. I call it the Zoom panel now. Yeah, right, 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 right. And oh, no, I don't want to leave the meeting. No, stop it here. Stop. I don't want that. No, oh, what did I do? What did I do? There we go. Okay. See, I'm out of it. I'm out of it. I haven't I can't do anything straight here. Okay, let's go here. Where are we? I uh, admit all. Okay. And then I got to remember to do this. See, so you can see all the people coming on. And we got uh, we got Kevin. Hello Kevin. How are you this evening? <laughs> and uh, we got uh, we got uh, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hello there. Yeah, and he's everything's fine. He, his audio is fine, and he doesn't have <clears throat> the the browser isn't up, uh, g giving us the sound back and whatever. Yeah. Hello, Alan. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Alex? I'm fine. Oh. And uh, the lovely and attractive uh, Josh Wheeler is with us tonight. Hello, Josh. Hi. He's always thrilled to be here. Hi, 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 you know, and uh, and and of course uh, Charlie Wallace, who's going to explain his T-shirt tonight. Now wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's the root of minus four. Yeah. Equals e minus four. equals two. 
Uh, it's all fun, all fun and games till somebody loses an eye. We can read it, Alan. <laughs> I wasn't sure about you. I was going to read it just to say that I was reading it, and you always interrupt everything I do. And you will, you're the kind of guy who will, when I'm setting up a joke, you will somehow say the punchline before I get to it and just ruin the whole thing for me. That's why you like me on your show. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, how, how are you doing tonight, Charlie? What, what uh, is uh, I was doing okay until y'all were putting down ordinary people. <laughs> Uh, oh, Ordinary People? Why? You like Ordinary People? That was my favorite movie of all time until Jurassic Park came out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What do those two pictures have in common? Who said they had anything in common? Well, I mean, you you said you, you Ordinary People was your favorite movie of all time until I Jurassic Park came know. along that I was very connected to. But that is the same year, that what we were talking about, that was the same year that Raging Bull came out. Yeah, too bad for Raging Bull. <laughs> yeah, hey, Raging Bull did not win the Academy Award. But if everybody asked what was the best film of that decade, at the end of that decade, nobody remembered Ordinary People, and they all said Raging Bull, hands down. Yeah, they also like the Donald Trump president, so what does that say? Wait a minute. What does that have to do with Raging Bull? In fact, wasn't it uh, wasn't it uh, Robert De Niro got on television and, and it was an award show? I think it was the Tonys. And he put down Trump and got all kinds of heat for it, you know. But anyway. Well, I didn't say I didn't like Robert De Niro. Uh, yeah, I like yeah. But I never thought I, I like Raging Bull. Ordinary it's People was a I fine movie, but it wasn't. It wasn't the best picture of that year. I'm sorry. Matter of opinion. Yeah. Well, you know, and I suppose you were feeling bad when Jurassic Park wasn't nominated for an Academy Award. Exactly. Yeah. I was pissed off. Well, you know, the trouble is those kind of films never do get nominated. No, they don't. You know, and they should. But the attitude of the Academy is, well, they got their award. They got all that money. Yeah, hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Award. Exactly. So, you know. Uh, here comes Tony. Huh? Everybody, be quiet. Here comes Tony. Uh, Tony? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, connect your audio, Tony. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Tony? Yeah. Have you had any coffee tonight? Oh God! Oh, Look God. at the size of that cup. Oh. All the family on Roku. What? What? Well, uh, all the family's on Roku for free. So I was just watching season one, some episode. On Roku, it was it's for free. What do you mean it's for free? Like on the Roku channel, they have like classic shows, and uh, they put all in the family up there. I refuse to watch the Roku channel. Oh, I like it. I like it. I just no, it's 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 there as a shill. <sighs> it's it, it's it's there to get some. Uh, money from you, basically. I got to watch the commercials. So I get because up what they do is they run commercials in all those yeah. shows, and then they make the money off the commercials. And I have no time anymore for anything that has commercials in them, because I can go. Because I get up and stretch. I, I just decided oh. I got a three month free, and then I just decided that I'm going to continue with the non free version of YouTube Premium. For I only Netflix, like you said, for I only one Netflix. simple reason, it's eleven ninety nine a month. But I don't have to sit there and watch commercials <laughs> before <laughs> everything, or have it in the middle of something, you know. Uh, and and so I'm I'm going to pay every month for YouTube when I should be getting it premium. When I should be getting it for free because I'm doing all this for them and they make money off of me, you know. And then give me back just a stipend you know mm. i think i made two hundred dollars last year whoa you know hot stuff uh anyway how you doing josh what's new anything uh floating your boat today well i'm doing okay i don't think there's anything new really yeah yeah uh, you know you said something to us uh, when you and i and kevin were talking privately uh, and with, with Patrick as well. You brought up the fact that, the, the, the truth be known, the Russian military 
sucks. <laughs> you know, and, and I thought, hey, that was a good observation, but I didn't know how true it was till the last couple of weeks. Mm. How do you allow your flagship to be sunk? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's been so, I think we were, we were talking about this on Saturday, so yeah. that means, I would say it's been six days since Boris Johnson visited Ukraine and Putin has not launched a nuclear weapon on the United Kingdom yet. <laughs> Either that means he's not as easily offended as we said, or they're still trying to locate the coordinates for London on the map. <laughs> that is beautiful. Yeah. That's funny yeah. as hell. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm just saying, and I'm not dismissing the things that could happen. I mean, trust me, we're all aware of it. I'm just saying they just act like, you know, if, I mean, it's fine to go on television and report that we're giving the Ukrainian weapons, but. But oh, but don't do that because you know he might get offended, and if he gets angry, he might launch a nuclear weapon or something. Like I mean, you know, He's Boris living, Johnson he, went there and walked around, and you know it was on television. And I mean, I, I don't know. They haven't vaporized the United Kingdom yet. Or yeah, anything. I mean, right. Exactly. Uh, well, you know, he uh, the uh, uh, through diplomatic channels the in Russia um just uh, made a threat towards us that if we give the uh the uh, U ukraine's uh, ukrainians uh any more um anti ship missiles or whatever uh that they're going to be reprisals oh. and and we're going well you know to begin with it wasn't sent directly from putin you know it was some <laughs> some other person in their in their government and and oh, you I sit mean, there and you're right. going, what are you going to do? Send us to bed without our dinner or something? What what is what is the big threat you have got here? Yeah, I mean, so right, so we won't give them to Ukraine then. Instead, we'll just give them to like Moldova, and then they'll give them to Ukraine because that's totally different. Give them a starter country, right? You know? Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So if we do that, Putin will say, oh, oh, well, that's fine. What country don't we like? Which country can they have? Which country could we give Russia and just say, here, oh, this right. is yours, play with it, you know. We can have Texas. Texas oh, yeah. would be good. Florida. Let's give them Florida. Yeah, it's got a lot of oil. Yeah. Give, give them Florida. A lot of well, Florida's fine, too. Yeah, Florida's big, big, just perfect, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just like, you know, if we send it somewhere first and then that country gives it to the Ukrainians... Putin will not be offended, but if we like direct ship it there, mm -hmm. you know, like UPS or something, mm -hmm. he'll he'll view that as an overt act of war. You know, while we're joking about this, people are still dying in Ukraine. Yeah, you know, right. I mean, that's the horrible part about it. But it is getting to be such a almost a comic show when you think about how bad the Russians are at running a military. Yeah. I mean, we're not we're not going to do it, but I mean, it seems like an opportunity for the world to, you know, to really put a check on Russian aggression for a long time to come. And I'm not talking about, you know, a crossing into their borders and, you know, marching to Moscow and making it a democracy and all that, because we all know that that's not a good idea. You know, any kind of change like that has to come from, you know... Uh, no, no, I agree with you. I agree. With with you. But what but, we should do is chase him back to his borders. Correct. That, yeah. You know, and 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 be very forceful about it. You know, I mean, give him a drubbing while you're at it. You know, I mean, that's that's a possibility. But no one's really one wants to entertain it. You know, very seriously, other than the Ukrainians, of course. But yeah, I mean, I, I you know, there's. There's a lot of drummed up fear, you know, and I mean, I think, you know, a lot of it's pretty overblown. I mean, there's just just notion that if there were to be some NATO force that were to go in there mm -hmm. and really push back on them, that, you know, he'll just go off and he'll, you know, vaporize them all or whatever. But like I've said, I, I mean, I'm not saying that can't happen. I'm just saying that, you know, that's the end of him if that's what happens, because 
you drop a nuclear weapon. Well, if he yeah, if I he mean, drops it, you know, I mean, if, I, I just right. I mean, I think that you've made that argument for a long time that that's why if the Iranians possessed a bomb, it's not like 15 minutes after they get done with it, they're going to vaporize the fucking Israelis because look, that's the end of the Iranians. Too, well, what I'm saying is, if, if if Russia decided to launch a nuclear weapon, with it, number one, we'd knock down that nuclear weapon, right? That's to begin possible. with. Oh, it, it, quite not only possible, quite probable. And probable. then the next thing that will happen probable. was you're going to look at a big giant ash on the earth, and you're going to say that used to be Russia. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying is you know they. I, I don't think you know. I, I mean, I, look, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe we wouldn't do anything, and it's. I, but I find that how, hard how, to believe. How, how I mean, about I just this? Think you know? Yeah. How about this as a game plan? Why don't we just do our own little threat? Get out of Ukraine now, or we're coming in. You have time to get out. We're warning you ahead of time. Sure. But we're going to go in there. This is a humanitarian thing. We want to stop the killing, a needless killing of human beings. Yeah, look, you know? I, I lean closer to that all the time, really. I mean, I, I don't... Uh... And I'm a big anti-war guy. You know, I, 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 I'm, but in this case, I go, I say, time to do something about it, and um, you know, I mean, uh, uh, I, uh, I, I look at him and I, I say, this guy is just doing terrible stuff, and he shouldn't be allowed to get away with it because if he feels he can get away with it now, hey, look, I went in there, I did all this stuff, I'm going to keep doing all this stuff, nobody's stopping me from doing it, he's going to do it somewhere else eventually. You know, yes, uh, Alan. That might be his shoe in to, to win in twenty twenty. Would, would you turn your Would you turn your mic down? You're just that loud. I'm sorry. Blasting. Somebody said that to me. Blasting. Uh, I'm trying to find the setting. Mm. Uh, that's not it. Hold on. I'll come back. Okay. Well, we'll wait. Uh, okay. I'm yeah, sorry. You know, I, oh, I, geez. I wish that we could take you know more of a a stand like that, but you know, I I don't think we are. I mean, I just. You know, I get that we're having some aggression, you know, in the situation and everything, and, and a lot of that's welcome, but we also just sort of, you know, we're a little too passive with with him and a little bit too focused on his, we're, we're allowing his feelings him, and, you know, his thoughts, and I just don't... Well, we're kowtowing to his bullying is what we're doing, yeah. you know, and that's not uh, not a good thing. We really shouldn't. Yes, now now here is Alan. Is this better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So, um, usually presidents that, uh, when we're involved with a war, they win re-election. Maybe that's Biden's way to win re-election. Stay in a war, right? Yeah, I'm surprised that Trump didn't start a war at some point so he could stay in office. Well... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, commander in chief. A lot of times, you know, if they if there's a war going on and we're involved somehow in their first term, yeah. they usually win a second yeah. term. It certainly depends on the public's perception of that war, you know. And yeah. yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't know how widespread you know support is for active U.S. troop involvement in, in Ukraine. I don't know that I've seen any polling, and you know, honestly, the people around where I'm, you know, my workplace or whatever, I don't hear outside of like this group, I don't hear a lot of conversation about it. You know, I think most of it's in passing. So I don't, you know, I don't really have a read on the public's, you know. Well, they're probably more cared about the, they're probably more cared about the inflation. They, they care more about things right. like that. Yeah. Uh, that's the problem with the American people. I mean, we're essentially, we're the most selfish people on the face of the planet. And we always think about our own best interest first. And if the economy is bad, uh, that's going to bite any president in the ass. I mean, they say that what uh, Biden's approval rating is now thirty-three percent. Bill said Drudge said that, didn't you? Well, no, oh, Drudge, but Drudge, Drudge was Drudge was uh, quoting uh, Quinnipiac, you oh. know, and Quinnipiac is pretty reliable. Mm. You know, so yeah, I didn't know it was that low. If it is, I mean, I. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, you know, that, that, that's that got to say something. I mean, was Trump ever that low? I don't think so. 
think yeah, he, 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 I think he was. Yeah, I, I thought he hit like 28 or 29 percent. Yeah, I think he did. I think you're right. You're right. And I think it really hovered around that 32, 30 to 35. A lot. I don't hardly remember him being in the 40s almost at all. Trump like, in the very yeah. beginning. You know, yeah, when right. people, that's what I'm saying. For like the last two years or what? I mean, when, you know, when people gave him like uh, the benefit of the doubt, okay, right. you know, let's give the guy a little bit of a chance. We don't even give presidents a chance anymore. Right. You know, as soon as they get in office, oh, he sucks. <laughs> the, the ratings go down. You know, we were. But talking, I mean, but I don't. I don't judge off polls and like who voted. I I go off of how many people showed up for the rally. Yeah. You know, yeah. By the way, you know his. A lot of people went to the rally. The last, the last rally. A lot of people went to Klan rallies too. Yeah, yeah. last week, uh, he did a rally. I can't remember where. It's one of his many ways of raising money for his own little fund. Home improvement projects. His home improvement projects. He's got a (laughs) Mar-a-Lago's a a fixer upper. Um, (laughs) Actually, it was to tell you the truth. But anyway, uh, uh, he. uh, went out and gave this speech and uh, 2,000 people showed up that same place when he spoke there the last time while he was running for president he had 1,500 uh, 15,000 people oh. well, so that shows you that people are not really turning out for his rallies I think the only people that are turning out are the groupies who follow him around from rally to rally kind of yeah. like kind of like the Grateful Dead fans you know yeah he's got some of them sure and then he yeah. starts then he starts playing and singing his hits too if you notice it's always the same kind of thing he says over and over and over again you know he says if yeah. I, if I, I mean he's I'm sure he'll start talking about critical race theory here before long as soon as he figures out how to spell all three of the words yeah well yeah or he can just use the initials well you know what CRT if they wrote the the down on a little dough car, you could probably handle that. Yeah. 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 But anyway. I don't see why not. He's fairly intelligent when and, it comes to. And I, and I that was, kind of I'm stuff. just getting into a uh, an argument with Marjorie. She goes, Oh, you know, we got Trump to contend with. He's going to run for president again. And I said, I, I, I don't think so. The latest thing that Trump has said is that he has a couple of, of physical uh, uh, health issues. And I think he's going to use that for as an excuse of why he's not going to run. You know. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess clock's kind of ticking on that. I mean, it's probably. I don't know. What do we got? Maybe till the end of this year, and you pretty much yeah. have to decide. You know something? We should. We, we just shouldn't allow that to go on. We shouldn't yeah. allow us to start. Um, it, we shouldn't. We should wait till the last year to start running for office. Don't let anybody say they're going to be running or whatever. They ha- they have debates two years before, and you're going. Come on, this is this yeah. is dogging it. You know, it's terrible, just terrible. That'd be nice, but yeah. so who are you going to vote for, Tony? For who now? <laughs> okay, hmm. let's say it's Trump against. Uh, who? Uh, 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 Trump against, uh, oh, I don't know, our, our New York mayor. Oh, God. I mean, <laughs> a mayor who's in captivity. Huh? I mean, did you know the guy, the subway killer, shooter, was in Cat's Deli, they're saying now? He was in Cat's Deli? Having lunch before McDonald's. They couldn't find him. Oh, come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. He went in to the subway. Yeah. He did the shooting. He yep. then crossed the he went across the thing to another train. Yep. Got on that train. Now that was he was on the N, I believe. I think so. He took it to Park Slope. Okay. I think they said stop, and then he changed. Mm-hmm. And now they're saying that he was in a cat's deli uh, before he went to McDonald's. Hmm. <laughs> well, he would have had to have taken the, uh, I think what the F train. 
Yeah, the F train down the, down to sure. Second right. Avenue right. and get off right there. That's where I used to live. And there's Cat's Deli. Yeah, I was going to say that's where you used to live, Alex. Because I used to go to yeah. Nona Shill to get my my yeah. little commission. Yeah, a- any word, off. any word of what he ordered at Cat's Deli? No, I just get the matzo ball soup and go yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. See, sandy, really. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who would I? You know what? I'm going to be honest. On Biden, I'm a. I don't want to. I'm kind of disappointed in really. I mean, I. Well, how many here by show of, of hands? How many are disappointed in Biden at this point? I mean, I mean, but I mean, I think. And, and we're all. Then, I, then you got to ask yourself: Do you want to have a? I'm disappointed in Joe Biden as president, or do you want to have Donald Trump back? Well, I mean, yeah, you want to be disappointed or pissed off? I don't think we're going to get. get yeah. Here, here's a question. See, it, let's say Trump doesn't run. Let's say he uses his health as an excuse. So now it's wide open to the Republican field, of which you know the Florida governor, what's his name, is going to. Yeah, he wants to do it. He wants to do it. Yeah. He's going to make you just as pissed off as Trump. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he's a uh, yeah right. But you let's, know who I strangely like? I like Mitt Romney. I don't know why. Well, I'll tell you, Mitt's, Mitt's kind of, um, how can I put it? I, I don't hate him, okay? I don't want to like him because I think that he has certain, he, he is a conservative after all. So his, his political philosophy is, again, is counter to mine. However, he doesn't like Trump. He doesn't consider him a responsible Republican or even a Republican really just somebody who's you know out for his own best self-interest and I think that that's what I like about Romney yeah, that might be it too because he stood up to him a little bit he never counts him well I mean you could do worse than Romney for president okay you know um, it's just that I you know I, I, I there's something about him that doesn't sit just right with me you know. It's almost feels like he's hiding something. Like something but like, in, in many, in many cases, something. when there's a difference between doing the wrong thing and the right thing, he does the right thing. And yeah. I've got to, I've got to give him credit for that. Yeah. So, so who would you vote for? Uh, uh, oh, let's say Biden or Romney. I think I would go Romney. See, I don't think he would run again. Because I'm think, looking at his age; he's 75 right now. Yeah. Well, he's a young man compared to what we've had. You know, I see. I'm kind of the. You know, I don't want to sound like an ageist because we're all getting At my old. age. There should be an age limit, like you said. There really should. Well, I don't think there should be an age limit, but you know, do you know we have the oldest? What am I right about this, Josh? Maybe you know the statistics on this. The oldest Senate in history. The average age of the Senate is the oldest we ever had. Do you know how old, are you ready for this one? This is a good one. Do you know, okay, uh, uh, how uh, old, um, what's her name? California. Uh, Feinstein? Feinstein. How, how old she is? Do you know how old she is? 80. 85? Uh, Keep going. 88. 88 years old. Yeah, and they say she's losing her cookies. Yeah, well, yeah, come on, I'm losing mine already. I don't know what date it is. I mean, I'm 52. Yeah, <clears throat> they're saying that. Uh, by the, the way, where are my cookies? To answer questions for. Her. Yeah, where are my cookies? Mm-hmm. I'm wondering where they are right now. Hello, Jack. Oh, Jack's here. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Let me wake up. Where am I? Yeah, you're. What in, are you people doing in my bedroom? You're you're in <laughs> you're in Oz. Yeah. 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 How you doing, Jack? Hey, don't forget, our governor here in Texas wants to run also. Oh, yeah, yeah. Abbott, right. Well, yeah. Good. Same boat as the same. Well, we, we already had a president who was in a wheelchair. We don't need another one. True, you know? true. You know? Hey, listen, I've heard you talk about me doing trivia. Mm-hmm, yeah. And you've even challenged us to do trivia together. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to see how good you are. What do you mean? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, you're catching me at a point in my life where I don't have a brain left. <laughs> well, well, wait you know? a minute. I heard last night that, that makes you, were... you guys equal. <laughs> <laughs> last night, Doc said that you were in the same playpen with Moses. 
You know, I'm tired oh, of those jokes. I am tired of those jokes, okay? Not only are they ageist, which I don't mind, but they're really crappy jokes. Well, that wasn't my joke. I can't even get Well, no, I heard the one you pulled about me and uh, I don't know who, who, whatever. I don't even remember that one. Well, you, and then you said, you said, I got a great trivia question for you, Alex. I got a great trivia question. I got for a you. great trivia question for you. What area is it in? It's in um, recent American history. Well, you see, that is not my trivia. All right, pick a trivia quiz. Question. Entertainment. 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 Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, he's got to he's got to go look for him. I can no, make I got, up I good ones. Right I, I got it right here. I've been, you know, I've been laying for you, laying in the cut as we yeah. used to. Yeah, he goes to his trivial pursuit cards and finds a question. You know, uh, this is not trivial pursuit. Mm. Back oh. when Alex Bennett said he enjoyed playing music, one of the Beatles' first hits was "Twist and Shout." Mm -hmm. Twist and Shout. Mm -hmm. What R and B group did Twist uh, and Isley Shout? Isley Brothers. You right? Yeah. <laughs> they had the first hit. Okay, I'm going to ask you a trivia question. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They had the first hit, but there was another group that actually did the first recording of it. First recording of Twist and Shout. Um, I don't remember any before that. Group called the Fiestas. You're probably right. I, I vaguely remember the Fiestas, but I would have never come up with that as an answer. Well, okay. You okay. got one for me. Back at me. Okay. Prior to the Maltese Falcon in 1941... I wasn't born then. Wait a minute. You're sure familiar with the Maltese Falcon, aren't you? Of course I am, yeah. All right, and, and if you're good at trivia, you know things that happened before you were born. Yeah, most There were of the time. two other versions of the Maltese Falcon prior to that. First of all, what were their names? You and, got me. And who were the stars? You got me. I don't know. Already got it. You, do, you, do you know it? Does anybody here know that? Answer that question? Okay. Uh, the answer to the question is, the first Maltese Falcon was the Maltese Falcon with Ricardo Cortez oh. in 1931. Wow. And then in 1936, the same story by Dashiell Hammett and credited to Dashiell Hammett was um, was made as a film called Satan Met a Lady, starring Betty Davis with a guy by the name. Well, well, now I had his name in my head a moment ago, who played Sam Spade. Uh, up, 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 up. Um, what was his name? Uh, I think the guy was named Bogart. No, it wasn't Bogart. Bogart oh. was 1941. All right. Uh, uh, let me. It, what was Satan met a lady? I, 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 I had this name in my head today when I was thinking of this question, and uh, you know, uh, let me see here. Satan met a lady. Satan. Uh, let's see. Oh no, no, come on. Jeez, I can't stand this. That's Alexa. That's who you usually go to. Uh, yeah, uh, she's usually having it. Satan met. A lady, yeah, Warren William. That was his name, Warren William. Interestingly enough, you mentioned uh, Cortez. Yeah. Cortez and Warren Williams mm -hmm. did movies uh, involving the same iconic character, Sam Spade. But not just Sam Spade. Oh yeah. They also, they also did. Perry Mason. You're right. He, uh, Warren William, in fact, was the first Perry Mason. He was the greatest Perry Mason, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Because yeah. he played Perry Mason more like uh, he was originally written, where he was a playboy and mm -hmm. you know, kind of a you know yeah. roused about yeah. kind of guy. And now we've lost every young person that might possibly <laughs> listen to this program. Oh, fuck them. <laughs> yeah. But I have one other question for you. Give me one. Right, I'll give you one. This is just one. You just got to give me one answer. Have you ever seen the iconic motion picture still of uh, Harold Lloyd? Are you familiar with Harold Lloyd? I'm familiar with Harold Lloyd. Yeah. Hanging from a clock. From a clock. What film is that from? I can't remember. And if you had I waited, uh, you know, any longer, I would have forgotten Harold Lloyd. Yeah. Safety last. 
That's it. Damn it. Okay. All right, one more, and oh, I'm God. through because I got to get ready for a show. And, I got and nothing I, ready. Yeah, and I don't want to lose all the young people that, that I have on well, the show. Like I said, well, I don't want to use the young person we have. That's watching right. This you show. know, considering the fact the youngest person on this panel is probably Doc, and he's in his sixties. Don't uh -uh. worry. No, <laughs> Tony. Tony. Or maybe probably Tony's Josh. a kid. Tony's Josh. a kid. Josh. I think. How old do you know? You know who the kid is here. Who? Josh. Josh. Yeah. Josh is still in his 40s. I'm 52. Yep. Yeah, he's 52. Yeah. Josh. That's my trivia question for tonight. Right, Who's the youngest like guy Jack. on the panel? Okay, quick, 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 quick. Who said, if somebody wants to shoot me from a window with a rifle, nobody can stop it? JFK. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hit it out the... You know, all right, we won't have the trivia show now, I guess. Well, you don't want to. I'll wipe your ass all over oh, the well, uh, well, internet. Hey, you know, if we can pick our favorite categories, I'll go I'll go a mano a mano with you. Yeah? Well, yeah. What's your favorite category? Uh, probably, uh, probably music. Music, okay. I might be a little lighter on music than I am on film and TV. You want to go film? Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But anyway, we'll talk well, about when we'll do this. You know, well, stay tuned for the well, intersection well, coming up at the top of the hour. I'm not going to bring your ratings up. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> the day you bring my ratings up will be the day I'll ask for real money to do. You, you know what ratings energy. going up on GabNet are? One more yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, about the truth. And that's when we double our audience. Yes. Yes. Thanks, right. Jack. Hey, appreciate it, pal. Okay. Yes. Yes, Alan. You, you talked about probiotics. I take them, too, for irritable bowel syndrome. What one do you take? And now we lost all of our young people. Here we go. What? I take uh, some uh, gummies that I buy from uh, Costco. And then I also take, if it starts getting bad, I actually have some probiotics. You know, uh, actually. I take a line and culturel. Oh, good, good. Okay, let's. Anybody here else have IBS that want to talk about it? Tell us what you what your favorite uh, probiotic. probiotic is. For, okay. Boy, do you take? You know, you kind of like uh, when I when I when I was uh, I once described. I had a a person on my show work with me. I love the living daylights out of her, but she had a time in her life where drugs were a bad part of her life. And, and I would be doing the show, and she would just be, because she was high, she would kind of like uh, steer things in a different direction. And I once described it as being like driving down the road with a drunk person in the seat next to you tugging on the steering wheel, you know, and you had to keep the car going straight ahead. And that's how sometimes I feel about you, Alan. Thank you. Is that, you know, I'm, yeah. Anyway, um, so what else is in the news? Let's see here. What, uh, uh, of course, we had our, our, big, our big deal here in New York the other day. Guy goes into a subway, shoots 15 people. Not good, not terrific, but come on. How many people ride a subway every single day in New York City and only 15 got shot? I think more people get shot in New York City every day, not in subways. Above ground, yes. Above ground, yeah. So, and nobody died. And nobody died. I, I don't think he wanted to kill anybody. But, you know, he... If you shoot somebody with a gun, you don't have much choice. Yeah, I mean... Well, I mean, you could shoot up, okay? And, and and maybe like over their head. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then Ricochet's got him. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean he he, he let's put it this way. Um, you know, he, he they say, do you think he was crazy? <laughs> and I go, do I think yeah. he was? Yeah, he's crazy. only crazy because he sm carried a smoke grenade with him. Yeah, no, but it, crazy? Oh no, this guy's full. Com he had all his faculties about him. That's why people go into the subways and start shooting. Is because they got all their wits about them. His YouTube channel was must see TV, though I have to say, until they pulled it down. To what? 
he, he had a YouTube channel. It was called, uh, what do you, he called it The Prophet of Doom. <laughs> oh, my God, he was crazy. Oh, really? Was, Too yeah. bad I didn't get to see that one before it I know. I was, to, I, I was listening to it for 30 minutes, and then I went back in the afternoon, and YouTube pulled the video, all the stuff. I still like what he said, Charlie. He he was he he had every ethnic group. There was nobody from what I heard. You know, that he liked. I I play one song on here, and automatically YouTube knows I played a song, and they demonetize me because I I don't have the rights to play that music, and yet some guy has a YouTube channel where he's threatening everybody in the world, and somehow they can't catch it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's amazing what their priorities are. But, you know, I mean, the thing is that I, I went over to, um, I always love to go over to Fox because it's like going to another land, you know? It's like going to another world. And they were talking, they had a whole list of all the things this guy had done that he'd been arrested for. And there were like about 10 of them. Yeah, he had a lot. Most of them were misdemeanors. Most of them were misdemeanors. And I think whatever felonies he had, he wasn't found guilty of. But they were they were misdemeanors. <laughs> but I'm I'm thinking to myself. I mean, what do you have to do to get a good rap record that you know that that they that they stop you? Here's the reason they didn't stop him. Okay, not because of all the times he got arrested for stuff. Hell, I've I've got you know everybody here's got a misdemeanor if they got a traffic ticket. You know, uh, but what you don't have is you don't have people who say this guy is crazy and needs help. That we yeah. don't care about, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this guy—you just look at him, didn't he? I mean, I, yeah, he had that crazy eye with the eyes. I, I don't know if he were walking down the street, I'd be walking down the other side of the street immediately, awesome. you know, because he looks crazy and he has crazy eyes. And and I don't think nowhere on that big long list do they ever say, "Oh, and here they try to do something with him and his mental condition." Yeah, and that's where we make our big mistake. We don't go looking for the, the warning signs of mental illness. So, whatever. But, but well, are, you saying, are you saying everybody that gets arrested should be uh, evaluated by a psychologist or psychiatrist? I, I would say if it's, if it's something that seems to be a, a crazy guy's thing, you know, okay. Hey, okay. you know, he went around That's brandishing a gun or something like that. Sure, yeah. I think that we should always take that as a possibility okay. of what needs to be done. Okay. Because, you know, throwing him in jail isn't going to solve the problem, but throwing him in a psych ward for a while will. You know, and, if, if, and somewhere along the line, this guy probably could have gotten some help and not done what he did. But we didn't do anything to prevent it because that's not the way we do business. We simply wait till they do something wrong and then we punish them. Oh boy, you know. So. I, and they said he was going in, uh, in one of his rants. He was coming. He didn't like uh, our mayor because the mayor was trying to get. The well, neither do of. I. But I don't think about you know. Yeah. Throwing that's why he was. All, good thing he had COVID because they had to. Have wait a minute. Details. He doesn't like our mayor. The guy's only yeah. been a mayor for less than half a year. He says he thinks I, I can't say. He, well, he says they're trying to get the homeless out of the uh, out of, on the other uh, subway stations. And I only heard bits and pieces of it. He says he can't stop that. He can't do that. Some of the shit he said, he wasn't that far off with, though. I mean, he, out of the madness of some of his rants, I said, you know, he's not by, that. By the way, crazy. in case anybody's watching, this man's name is Tony Magno. He lives in <laughs> Queens, and he is in, I think, capable of doing some great harm. Yeah, with his wallpaper, it was driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember what <laughs> restaurant? Yeah, that out. wallpaper there. Wallpapers <laughs> drive me crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Alex, can I claim it as a defense? Something? Yeah, you're. I, I will come down and testify on your behalf. Because <laughs> I sit here watching you on the show, and I go a little crazy looking at that wallpaper. What are you doing? Look at this wallpaper. You lived with this for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. me, I got a woman in the back calling me, and I'm staring you at you. You know what's crazier, Tony? How yeah. long's your mother been dead now? Uh, a little over a year. A little over a year, and you haven't changed the wallpaper. You know what we said, Alex? Like we're cleaning this up, right? So my sister did say we may have to rip this broom apart. So I said, it's your call. I'm not going to have a haunt me. Exactly. Exactly. 
So you got to get the, you got the, you, Phil saved it, took off of it, we had to rip it, we'll still have it in, like, saved, so, right? So Gavin Newsom is thinking about running for president, maybe. Oh, he's not bad. I, I think he's so I would bad. ask the people here from California, of which there are two, how does Gavin Newsom sound to you? Uh, you know. Yeah, I agree with the <laughs> Bringing endorsement. I got a problem right now with what he's doing with all the surplus money. Really? What what surplus money? <laughs> well, California has a big surplus. Really? Really? And he's spending like a motherfucker. What's he spending it on? Uh, he, you know, some of the stuff he's not doing too bad with, but, you know, he, he's doing stuff like cleaning up California, you know, our... our, our <clears throat> our, uh, you know, highways are dirty and stuff like that. He's doing cleanup on the highways and he's, and he's, uh, you know, taking care of some of the homeless issues, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But when he goes out and does lotteries for vaccines and, and giving away money for shit like that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. You know, million dollar lotteries. For stuff like that just drove me nuts. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought that was pretty stupid. We could use that money for other stuff. So California has a lot of a lot of extra money. <clears throat> yeah, I we gained I... a lot of money in in uh, from from COVID and from uh, some other stuff, and then we got a pretty big surplus. More really? Because I I always I thought California yeah. was having a deficit problem. We were before COVID. Oh, what? It was like a bake sale? What? Yeah. They yeah. They, all of a sudden, we got a lot of money. I don't know what he was doing in the background, but we got a lot of money. And one we still the, got a pretty big surplus. Taxes on the rich, too. One of the things he wants oh, to right. do. He the shit out of everybody, yeah. One of the things Gavin wants to do to give away money is he wants to give every registered car owner yeah. their electric vehicles $400. That's another stupid idea. No kidding. I think it's ridiculous. He's going to give it people that ride their bikes a fucking well, you want to know something check. though? I, I don't uh, think you I don't think you have to pay those money. people. You know what what to, in order to encourage them? I think isn't the yeah. high cost of no, gas it's to, encouragement uh, it's, enough? Yeah. It's to offset the the um, the gas tax. Oh, and I think it's stupid. I think just cut the gas tax. No, but here's the thing. He wants to do this probably to make people feel like they should go out and get gas of, you know, uh, 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 what, what do you call it? Uh, environmentally it's an good. It's election year for him. Yeah, it, it's, it's well, nothing. Well, it it's is. just, it's an $800 rub me off. How do you think he's going to do this year? He'll win. He'll win, mm -hmm. but. Okay. But I, I think it's all okay. kind of false. Aside from that issue, how is he? Okay. Still, he still kind of rubs me the wrong way. He, he's got so, he does some good things, but he still kind of rubs me the wrong way. Well, he eats at the French Laundry, doesn't he? Yeah, and I keep hearing that crap, and that's all people <laughs> bitch about. <laughs> that's I mean, all he's famous for. He screwed up, and that's what bothers me. He he talks the big deal, and then he goes and screws up like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's stupid. Yep. You know, yeah, well. if he'd have just not gone to the French Laundry, he'd probably be fine. In case people don't know what we're talking about. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I, you, you know, know when I told if somebody, gonna, I, if you're gonna I, sit back and and preach, you know, the French Laundry is a big rest, is a famous restaurant up in Napa. I thought it was a laundry. See, <laughs> that's exactly why I thought I, I should probably I mean, say everybody what Everybody knows is. that you went up there during COVID and didn't have a mask on and started sucking on people's face and everything else. And, and you know, in the middle of COVID, and he blew it, just like Pelosi did when she went and had her little hair done or whatever. Yeah, but did. why why do people do that? Don't they why know better? Why do they better? do that? I don't understand. Is it, is it some kind of feeling that they're they're impervious to criticism? No, it's pure stupidity, and that's all. Because, I mean, I would say to myself, well, I'm not going somewhere. If I go to a restaurant, I'm going to go to a restaurant where, well, at that time, you didn't even want to go to a restaurant. Right. You know? Um yeah. But I mean, he, I, I, I'm sorry, but if you're standing up in front of the, you know, your state, let alone probably a few other states that are watching, mm -hmm. and you're saying, don't go out, 
you got to wear a mask, don't do this, don't do that, and then you fucking go out and do it, that's pure idiocy. Hypocritical. You know, walk the walk, talk, well, you know, talk uh, well, the talk, you and know, walk it, the walk. What, it, at that point, what a governor had to do was to do things that encouraged people to act with a certain behavior. We got to know that it was terrible behavior to go out and, you know, and, and, and go to a restaurant without yeah. wearing a mask or even go to a restaurant, period. Yeah. Uh, I have to say for as bad as uh, our governor Cuomo was, the problems that he wound up having, he did kind of walk the walk. You know, he didn't go eating at restaurants and do all. Am I, I right? Am I it. right, Jeff? He, he, yeah, he, I agree. He, he, he I know. never saw it, but you know, he was up putting his hand up people's dresses. Apparently, well, but, apparently, you know. <laughs> all that, all that has gone the way of uh, of uh, Don't get the COVID dodo. That. <laughs> gone the way of the dodo because none of those things seem to stick, and yeah. he is running for office again. We have ads on television now, Cuomo yeah. saying, "Hey." You know, uh, this is what needs to happen in New York, and this is how it needs to change. Uh, and uh, my name is Mario Cuomo. I have made mistakes in my life, but I one mistake I've never made is I've been behind you, the citizens of New York. And Better than you, is somebody going to well, vote for The him? difference is... I will in a second, in a heartbeat. Right. The difference is that they got Newsom on video, and they didn't get Cuomo on video. Right. I would have mm -hmm. liked to have seen that. Gavin's Gavin Newsom was proven. Cuomo wasn't. You know, I mean, in in the case of Cuomo, I often said that I said to Marjorie, I said if Cuomo kind of like stuck his hand up your dress or something, or found, or, or just put his arm around you and hugged you, uh, which is some of the things people said he did, would you be bothered by that? And she says, Hell no. <laughs> you know, she says, like, look at who it is. It's, it's Andrew Cuomo for crying out loud. Uh, you, you used to you used to support him, huh? You you used to support him. Oh, I still no, support I, him. I think support. I think he did a great job during the pandemic. Yeah, you were very. Let, let's go to our pan pandemic expert, uh, Ch uh, Charlie. Charlie, don't you think he did a great job? Yeah. You know, he what he did is he every day went on the air and gave what essentially was a pep talk. He was great. And got people to start wearing masks and to do what it took to bring the numbers down. And he, by his own force of giving the message every day and the people of New York going along with that message, managed to take the curve and turn it the other way. And that's my point with, with Newsom is he went out and did a lot of the same thing, not quite every day, and didn't have a big old slideshow, but he would go out mm -hmm. and he would say the same stuff out here in California, probably once a week, maybe once every two weeks. He'd go out and give the rah-rah speech, but then he would go out and get caught at the French Laundry, or he yep. would go out <laughs> and go to the whatever he did, you know, yep. and he'd get caught, and that's just stupidity. Yeah. Yep. And if you're going to run for an office, you can't be doing stupid shit. Yeah. Well, you are, you know, uh, you are an example. You're to, an example. To, to your You're constituents. An example. You're standing up in front of a bunch of people saying, mm -hmm. I am the example. Mm -hmm. This is how we want you to act. We're trying to get this thing under control, whatever. Mm -hmm. I want you to do this. Let's get it done, and then we'll be all right. And, oh, but, you know, I'm going to go have a, you know, yeah. Yeah. glass of wine with a bunch of people over here at this Escargo place. Who 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 else? I mean, we have him. He could run for president and probably have a really good shot because he's a good-looking guy, and he gives he's got a money. He gives a good speech. Got money, got yeah. Uh, but who else is there out there now? That, 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 because let's face it, I don't think Biden's going to run again. You know? No, there's really nobody that's really in line yet that said anything I heard, I heard i heard little see, did you beeps see? about Buttigieg again but who knows where that's going to go did you yeah. do you know that when he was giving a speech or something i didn't see the video on this but i'm led to believe that when he was giving a speech the other day and he was through with it he turned around to the right of him and started shaking hands with somebody who wasn't there who biden oh you know they're looking for everything they can you oh, know yeah. you know Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think he's that far that was gone. When he was with 
Obama, and everybody was crowded around Obama and shaking his hand. Oh yeah, so but yeah, no, but this hand. this was when, when he was give, had been giving a speech, and he was finished, and he turned around and he went, and he thought he was going to be shaking hands with somebody. They they're out to get him on everything. Oh, look at what an old man he is, you know. And all of this is ageist <laughs> because you're starting to see things. Part of it is he had, he's always had a stutter. You know, he, he, he's worked through it in many cases, but he ha he's always had a stutter, and so they take that as being absent-minded, you know. Well, yeah, if you if you go to Fox, there's a segment on that shit now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's one of those, It's I think it's after, it's either, uh, who is it, uh, Hannity or, yeah, I think it's Hannity. They have a segment on the shit. Well, you see, it's you're the, going you know, after the, the fight and gaff segment. Yeah, well, yeah, but there are two things you're going after. You're going after him because he's an old guy, okay, and you think yeah, he's not bullshit. in full possession of his faculties, and uh, you, you're going after him because he has a speech impediment. Yeah, it's bullshit. Neither of which would we allow anybody else to make fun of. Yeah, you know. And these are the two things that make him look doddering, but I think the problem is is that maybe he shouldn't appear on television as much as he does and allow other people who know the subject matter as well to speak for him, you know. And then once in a while, show up, give a speech, and, you know, rally the troops, and then go off and let other people speak for him. But he's on the air every single day. You know, I think the other day he was on, and I finally looked at my TV set and said, shut the fuck up. You know, I mean, he's uh, giving speeches, and every time he gives a speech, he's trying to dig himself out of that 33% hole, and every time he gives a speech, he's digging it deeper. And he really should, you know, not do it. I, I don't think it's necessary. How often did we hear from Obama, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, Charlie. One way he could dig out of that hole immediately, overnight, is if he would, if he would fulfill his promise to cancel student debt, loan debt. If he did that, his numbers would shoot up. Do you think it would? Yeah. Yeah, because there are, uh, that's an older group of people now who are still pay, paying off their debt. I'm still paying on my kids' student loans. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, absolutely. And and the other way is get the hell to go to Kiev, okay? Meet with Walensky, okay? He ain't going. Huh? He ain't, he ain't going. going. He ain't going. No. 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 Hey, listen, I think that we probably run out of time here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's the theme. It starts playing automatically when I'm supposed to get out here. Um, Kevin, good talking to you tonight. Always good. Talking to you too, Alex. <clears throat> Alex, very good talking to you. Uh, and then, of course, there's Jeff. We always love having Jeff here. Alan, always nice having you here. Josh is a treat. Anytime I ask Josh about something, we, we actually get a lecture. <laughs> and it's a good one. It's a good one. It's stuff you should know. He's a very savvy guy. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. Uh, and, and Charlie Wallace, of course, wonderful having you every night that I've been on this week, plus the Monday show. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be so spoiled now. And uh, Tony, you too. Good having you here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you as we uh, do this. See, we do that little wave goodbye. Yeah. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel. There, uh, they may. Some of them may go over and see Jack over on the uh, on the intersection. He'll be doing a another citizen panel. Only he'll be doing it on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you on Monday at 4 o'clock over on Facebook with uh, our, uh, our one of our favorite little shows we do called The Pop-Up. That's 4 o'clock on Monday. Then we'll see you right back here. Yes. Next Wednesday, 10.30 Eastern Time. Okay. Don't want you to think it's any other time. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, you know what I'd like to say. If you see her, tell her I love her. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Wear a mask if you are vaccinated. But if you aren't vaccinated, get a needle in your arm.